All right, so now we have x squared plus 1 is less than 0. Now, what are we going to do to solve this? Well, there's two ways we can solve it. We can factor it and work our way down and do that solution. Or, you know, we can, you know, take the uh, one to the other side, take the square roots and do all that. So let's do both ways and see what we get. So if we do this and do that, I can't factor that in my head. And so I'm going to have to say this is actually plus 0x, so I can use a quadratic formula. And so x is equal to well, minus b, which is 0, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 0 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times b, which is 1, all over 2 times a, which is 1. All right, well, that 0 is gone. So then I just have plus or minus the square root of, well, 0 is gone, and I have a minus 4, and it's just minus 4, and then over 2. Now, the square root of negative 4, well, that's going to give me plus or minus 2i, because we can take the square root of a negative. We know i's now. And so all over 2. So that's equal to plus or minus i. Okay. Now, what we're supposed to do on the number line is find our value. Well, I can't find an imaginary number on a real number line. And so I would say no solution. Okay. Now, what if we did it the other way? Okay, well, what if we said x squared plus 1 is less than 0? Subtract our 1. x squared is less than negative 1. Well, when can something, when we square it, be less than a negative 1? Anytime we square anything, I don't care. If we take negative 1 and square it, we get a positive number. Okay, so this already tells me there's no solution. Okay. That's kind of like if we take the absolute value of x and it's going to be less than c, it's going to be no solution. So it's one of those things like when we looked way earlier on the, uh, you know, for c being less than uh, or equal to zero, absolute value is less than c, that just doesn't work, okay? And so that would be how we would do that one. We just say no solution. So either way, we would do this, we get the no solution and, and it would work as far as the no solution, we get the same answer no matter which way we do it. All right, what about an application problem? All right, well, so here we have the profit in dollars made by selling X bottles of 100% all natural certified free trade organic Sasquatch tonic. Don't ask me where they came up with these. It is given by P of X equals negative X squared plus 25 X minus 100 for X between zero and 35. Now, how many bottles of tonic must be sold to make at least $50 in profit? All right. Well, what do we get to do there? Well, we have to set the profit equal to the zero, or I mean equal to the 50 instead of zero. And it has to be at least that much. So that means it's going to be greater than or equal to negative x squared plus 25x minus 100. So this has to be greater than or equal to that $50 profit. Okay. Now what we need to do is solve. So to solve, we need to get the zero on this side. Remember, that's the whole key. Get zero on one side, the quadratic on the other side. And so we get zero less than or equal to negative x squared, and then plus 25x, and then minus 150. Okay. Now I'm not going to factor that because I'm not that good of a factor. And so I'm going to say, well, let's let x equal a my and now, yeah, we can use we can use the negative one here. So we have a negative 25 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 25 squared minus four times negative one times negative 150 all over two times negative one. Okay. Well, what does that give me? Well, if I plug this into my calculator, uh, we get and minus, and then we have that. All right, so it looks like we get x equals, and it's going to be a minus 25 still, plus or minus 5 all over the negative 2. Okay, so that gives us two options. We have a minus 25 plus 5, so that's a minus 20 over a minus 2. And then we, or we get minus 25 minus 5, so it's a minus 30 over a minus 2. So this one is 10 or 15, okay? 
So basically, it looks like if you think about a quadratic, it's going to uh, be something like this. And so somewhere is going to be that at least $50 profit. So that's our $50 profit. So as long as we're between that 10 and 15, we should be above $50. And so I'm going to say we're going to sell between 10 and 15 bottles of the Sasquatch tonic. Okay. So that's how many bottles we need to sell to be in that greater than $50 or at least $50 in profit. Okay. So we have to sell at least $50. So we can equal the 10 and we can equal the 15. So if we, we wrote it down, it'd be 10, 15, and that would be how it would work because we had that inequality here that uh, greater than or equal to depending on which way you're reading from it's 50 less than or equal to but you know the negative x squared plus 25 x minus 100 is greater than or equal to 50 okay all right what about a height one we have a rocket so it's going to be the same kind of thing you know what think about a rocket what does it do it launches it goes up and it comes back down and it's a quadratic. And so we have this quadratic is going to be representative of our launch here. And so our height h in feet of a model rocket above the ground t seconds after liftoff is given by h of t equals negative 5t squared plus 100t for t between 0 and 20. Now, when is the rocket at least 250 feet off the ground? So, you know, we're going to have some point here. We have to be 250 feet off the ground you know, to be able to be greater than that. And we want to know what times is it going to be? So what time is that? And what time is that? So between there, where is that going to be? So 250 less than or equal to negative 5t squared plus 100t. Now we solve that for 0 over here again. So we're going to have to subtract 250. And so 0 less than or equal to negative 5t squared plus 100t minus 250. Now, I could use that and go directly into my quadratic. Or I could notice, hey, all those have a factor of 5 in there. So if I divide everything by 5, or if I multiply everything by 1 fifth, that's going to reduce my numbers I have to use in my quadratic formula. And Maybe for, I don't know, any reason I want to get this to be a positive, I can multiply by a negative. And so that's going to uh, give me what I need there. Okay. And so uh, zero is going to be less than or equal to our t squared minus 20t plus 50. And so then I can say, well, okay, well, I'm using x's, but t's work the same way. t is going to be equal to uh, minus minus 20 plus or minus square root of negative 20 squared, and then minus 4 times 1 times negative or positive 50. And then that's all over 2 times 1. Okay. Now what do we have? Well, that's going to be a positive 20. And so t is going to be basically a 20. That's going to be 400 uh, minus 200. So it's going to be plus or minus square root of 200 all over 2. Now we can take that in our calculator. And so it looks like uh, if we do the positive, it's going to be 17.07. If we do the negative, well, that's going to give us uh, 2.93. And these are seconds. All right. Now, that means that 2.93, we're here at 17.07. We're over here. And so between those two, we are going to be greater than 250. So we can have 2.93 comma 17.07, another bracket, and that interval is going to always be greater than 250. Or, you know, we can say between, you know, and it's going to be estimates because this will have a lot more decimals, uh, between 2.93 seconds and 17.07 seconds, 
we will be above 250 feet, okay? So that would be how that would work. All right, so let's pause there and we'll come back for some extra examples.